I can't believe it. They're bringing it back. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. 20 years from the initial launch of this model, and approximately four years after it was discontinued, we're finally seeing the return of the Gibson Les Paul Supreme. I first saw this get posted by Five Star Guitars over on Reverb, but that listing quickly disappeared, but it's still on their website right now. But it's listed pre-ordered, Gibson Les Paul Supreme, Trans Ebony Burst with Hard Shell Case. And when it was listed as brand new, I thought for sure that had to have been some sort of a listing error. There's no way Gibson would would bring it back. But then I read the description, Gibson is excited to announce the return. <laughs> I am so excited for this. Like, I just recently became a big Les Paul Supreme fan due to the discontinuation of them. The last Supreme model was done for 2019. It was the 125th anniversary run. And they were supposed to make 125 of these things. And just recently, there was confirmation that only 31 of those were ever created. I've heard that it's because the model was just too expensive to produce. This was Gibson changing ownership time you know, 2019, 2020. They weren't trying to finish up the old Henry J era stuff. They wanted to move into the original and modern collection. There's also some talk that they couldn't find beautiful enough of woods. But let me tell you, those 30 that they did craft are fantastic. I'm happy that I still have one of those in my collection because I always thought that was going to be the last Supreme. But no, it looks like sometime in the year 2023, we're going to see some more. Now, unfortunately, this is the only photo we have and everything else we have to go off of is just regular text and spec sheet stuff. However, we can actually tell a lot from this. Gibson's excited to bring these back with a refreshed feature set. Oh, that scared me at first. And let me tell you, if you love the Supreme because of everything we know them today, you're in for a huge shock here as we go on. So it says we're going to still feature a triple A figured maple top, which we can definitely see over here. That looks like a regular Supreme. And then we've got a mahogany body with, oh, ultra modern weight relief. It doesn't say anything about a maple back. And if we look at our pre-order price, it's only 4,000 bucks. If you go onto Reverb right now and you want to buy a Supreme, sometimes you'll get lucky and see one listed at about 35, but most of them seem to vary within that four to $5,000 range. I'm not saying that they're getting it. Some of these earlier ones are fetching pre Premiums. And there's some weird limited editions out there like the triple humbucker and then the weird 2015s that are unique in their own individual way. But $4,000 seems like a really good price as compared to what other people are paying for used ones. Here's some recent sales fully documenting three to 4,000 at the very least. So potentially not doing the maple back anymore if they were worried about the Supreme being too expensive, that is one way that they could make it cheaper. But let's not count it out yet, but we need to talk about this ultra modern weight relief. That's this one right here, the weird V shape and then your Holy Explorer cutaways. That's not what we're used to on the Supremes. According to this graphic, the Supreme was chambered in this sense. However, we've actually endoscoped some Supremes and honestly, I don't remember that center block being there. I think that'll vary depending on when it was made, but they were chambered and they're larger than regular Les Pauls because of the carved back and the carved top. I mean, look at this side profile shot. And now look at a regular Les Paul. They were bigger guitars and they actually feel good if you go into it knowing to expect that. So the fact that we have no mention of the maple back and the ultra modern weight relief tells me this is probably just going to be a regular Les Paul, but kind of has some supreme-ish elements to it. So continuing on, it looks like they've opted to leave it alone with the mahogany neck, but we still have the ebony fretboard. That's great because if they're not bumping these up to the custom shop, that is one of the few Gibson USA models to feature that outside of like the modern ones. Would they put this in the modern collection or the original collection or just like its own new thing? It probably more so fits towards the modern. So I guess it makes sense when we read our next phrase, a compound fretboard radius. As far as I'm aware, I think that's new for the Supremes. I know we had that on the Catalina, but that would definitely put it within the modern collection. Then they called it the Super Split Block Mother of Pearl Inlays. Nothing's changed here. They're still the Super 400 style. But if you need even more confirmation that we're ditching the maple back, the neck has a modern contoured heel. You know what this sounds like to me? It sounds like a Les Paul Modern using a discontinued model's name, leaving the back essentially alone, and changing up our inlays to be Super 400s instead of our Mother of Pearl trapezoids. Because there's two different styles of contoured heels. There's the Les Paul Modern version, and then we've got the true access heel carve. When I first read this sentence, I thought it was going to be access, but now I'm thinking, probably just gonna be that sculpt out part. 
But get this, the headstock is adorned with a striking new mother of pearl inlay, inspired by a design from the 1940s that was discovered in the Gibson archives. Mm, Gibson archives? Is this another archives collection guitar, you know, like the Theodore? That has me really excited, but it also means we're losing our Supreme Globe inlay, but a lot of the later made Supremes had already lost it anyways. Like again, the 125th anniversary didn't have that, had the 125th anniversary badge. The 2015s, they said Supreme on the headstock, looked a bit goofy, but it is what it is. We haven't seen the return of that intricate globe in a while, so I don't necessarily blame them for not bringing it back. Now our pickups, looks like we're going Burst Bucker Pro and Pro Plus, paired with Push Pull volume and tone pots for coil tap phase inversion and pure bypass switching where have we heard that before les paul modern series there's also no mention of the gold frets the original supremes did have those but honestly i'm not too sad about that disappearing because they just look rusty instead of nice shiny gold and now they're teasing us three gorgeous finishes elegantly highlighted with gold hardware Unfortunately, at the time of recording, I only have confirmation of a trans ebony burst. I would assume we might see a natural, maybe a cherry sunburst, or maybe they're gonna go crazier than that. So that pretty much wraps it up for the most part. I mean, I do see that we have locking Grover tuners on these. That's nice. So now I'm really curious. The, the whole thing that makes a Supreme a Supreme is the fact that you don't have the back plates, but if they did away with the maple, they wouldn't necessarily have to do that. But looking at the stock photo, output jack is still huge. So maybe they just forgot to put it in the spec sheets and were worried about nothing. It'll still have the maple. Remember, this is very early. I'm not even sure Five Star was supposed to release this to the public yet. I'm sure we will get some more information in a couple of months, but I'm excited to try a new Supreme because I love these things. It took me a long time to warm up to them because I remember playing one of these at Guitar Center once when I was first getting into Gibson guitars. and I didn't like them, but it's because I didn't know what to expect. So, so far, a lot of these specs spook me. It's not really a Supreme anymore, but I get it. They didn't want to make the original body style. I'll take some sort of a Taiji over type thing because then maybe they might bring back the traditional Supremes in one other day. So with the Supreme coming back, are they going to bring back any other models like Blues Hawk and Nighthawk. Like, I know we got the one that's a Nancy Wilson signature Nighthawk in the Epiphone lineup. And if I remember correctly, they were talking about bringing Firebirds back. It's just in case you didn't notice, the original collection Firebirds have disappeared. They were going to bring them back as potentially set neck construction guitars. Maybe we're going to see them all get released later this year. Ooh, here's an idea. What if they bring back the Les Paul Standard double cut? I'm not the biggest fan of them, but I know there is a little bit of a niche following. These things originally had chambered bodies, and if they could bring them back around the $2,000 price point, maybe $2,250. As long as they're just not as expensive as regular Les Paul standards, I think people would like it. But honestly, the cost as the manufacturer would probably be about the same, I'd imagine. So maybe to achieve that, they should bring it back in a modified way, like don't have the crazy fancy flame tops. Maybe just leave it beautiful pure mahogany, but play with your Colors. Still leave yourself a fancy fretboard, I think, with slightly better inlays, but that could be interesting. I've kind of felt the modern and original collection has started to get stale now that we've had it for four years. We need some new colors or something added to it, so I'm glad we're at least getting one new model here. And with the way the market's been, base model guitars aren't selling as quickly. Because if you've noticed, Gibson.com's website, Les Paul Classic Limited Time Special Pricing. They were $2,500, but currently they're $2,199, which I think was what they were before the last April price increase. So they must have enough built up inventory that they don't necessarily have to worry about keeping up with the demand. Maybe that's signs that things need to change, or maybe it's just saying, hey, the economy isn't as good <laughs> as it once was. I've personally noticed that in things that I've been selling. Your regular guitars, the market has shrunk. Super collectible high-end stuff still has a very strong market. So you'll have to let me know in the comments. Are you excited for this new release? If it's basically just a slightly dressed up modern Les Paul standard, do you think you would still pay four grand for it? Is that too much for a Gibson USA guitar? We've had all these conversations before, but time has shown the Supremes are a little bit special.
But hey, we've got a little bit of time left tonight. Let's go ahead and do some guitar hunting. First thing that pops up is Zach Wild Bullseye. And uh oh, I think we found one of those scam listings I just taught you guys about. But this one might be too good. Generally, these Zach Wilds, people have been asking like 10 grand. What are they actually getting? I would assume it's between seven and nine, but they've targeted to that 6,000 price tag where you could potentially get a deal on one if somebody needed to sell it for about that price. But this thing is like absolutely minty. And again, what they've done is they've just stolen these photos from a different listing. This is actually a pretty clean one of these. If you've never played one, oh man, these things have a power level to them. And that's a fairly early production being serial number 121. But if you want to know how you know it's fake, Finland. Brand new seller, no feedback, and they're targeting a suspicious price. Next up, Mr. Angus's Guitar Shop has a beautiful 68 quilt custom. That is a very nice top on this, I can appreciate that. The main upgrades between a regular custom and a 68, depending on the year of production, you get the long neck tenon upgrade. Now in current production, that's not a difference. Regular customs are getting the long neck tenons, but you get the ABR1 bridge upgrade. They'll both have maple tops, but the headstock veneer is a little bit different. And most importantly, it's the neck profile. They're just slightly chunkier. The difference between a regular Les Paul custom and one of the year reissues is vast. There's a reason why they're like a thousand plus more. They're both great guitars, don't get me wrong, but if you can try a 68 and then try a normal custom, you'll start to see what I'm talking about. There's an undeniable betterness to the 68s, but that's not saying a regular custom is bad by any means either. Again, you, you start going down a rabbit hole and I have to talk kind of vaguely in these videos, but the older 68s, they're not as different as you would think, but this is a nice one from 2006. Still has the COA. He's asking 7,500. I don't think he's all that far off, but whoa, I didn't realize it was him selling this thing too. So I've been looking for one of these Sammy Hagar signature Red Rocker Explorers for a while. We documented the Les Paul, and it's pretty much the last signature explorer that I haven't documented out of the 2010s era signatures, at least on my show. Unfortunately, I have to go through the whole thing again when I piece them together for my personal collection, but I just love signature explorers because it makes the Explorer pretty interesting. So the Red Rocker, it, it's just got red. Rosewood fretboard, this one's nice and dark. You get his Red Rocker truss rod cover. Honestly, it, it's not the coolest Explorer out there, but what makes it unique is most of them have a chicken foot logo back here that just kind of looks like a peace sign, but it disappears at certain angles. But this one does not have it. And according to the seller, the story is that this might have been given to Sammy Hagar, who then gave it to his tour manager, who then eventually sold it, and now Mr. Angus has it. But even he's not sure if that's the true story. I mean, it's got some pretty cool case candy to back that up. But as an explorer collector, I kind of want the chicken foot logo on the back. <laughs> so that's why I didn't make an offer on this one. But if he could verify that story, oh yeah, easily it's worth what he's wanting. All right, Chocolateites, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.